So welcome everybody. Um, our objectives today are uh, we want to finish our robot example where we were using integrator backstepping. Um, then we're going to do as a class exercise, and this is why it's important to come to class, we're going to do an academic example. And then uh, finally, we're going to look at a high gain current feedback um, problem. And high gain current feedback is something that's a very practical engineering solution. Um, and we're going to show why people use this as, a, as a, a good engineering solution. But then we're going to talk about how to do a better job using our backstepping control approach. So. Um, if you recall, for like the past three or four classes, we've been trying to work around the test and finish up this example, which started with our kinematic model. And our dynamic model. And we had a task space. Tracking error was our control objective, where we're given some desired constant um, desired position in the task space, and then we wanted to, to move the manipulator to track to go to that spot. Um, this is called the regulation problem, by the way. Whenever our control objective is, is to move it to a constant, that's called regulation. If the constant is zero, some people call it stabilization. Is that also called set function? That's right. Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't use the word set um, tracking, but it's set point regulation. I just heard that term before. Yeah, well, the constant is called the set point. And then we defined a backstepping error because we had this cascaded system where we didn't have any control input in this set of equations. And so we wanted to work with this by introducing a, a phantom or a desired uh, control input where we had QD dot, we added and subtracted J QD, and we had a backstepping error. And our, and at the end of the last class, We developed these closed loop dynamics for our track our set point error. And so now we need to investigate the backstepping error. Because if you look at this equation, then you can tell that our motivation is we have to eliminate this eta term. You know, we have to eliminate our backstepping error. Because if we eliminate our backstepping error, then we can exponentially go to zero, right? So here's our motivation. Drive our backstepping error to zero. And this is always the case. And so if we, if we want to drive the signal to zero, we need to develop the open loop dynamics for it, okay? which is going to be a to dot, which is going to be q double dot minus qd double dot. So since we've got q double dot sitting there, and q double dot is sitting here in our dynamic expression. Let's go ahead and multiply through by the inertia matrix. And the inertia matrix is time varying in this case. So now we can insert the dynamics here. And when we do that, we get um, minus dm q q dot q dot minus f of q dot minus g plus tau minus m of q qd 
Double that. <clears throat> okay, now let's start thinking about the alphanol function a little bit. We know we're going to have we know we're going to have a one half e transpose e in there because we want to show that e goes to zero. And we know we're going to have an eta in here because we want to show that eta goes to zero. But now that we're developing our closed loop air systems with this m times eta, what does that make us start thinking about? What are we going to have in our only up and off derivative? We're going to get an m dot term in the Lyapunov derivative, right? E dot, which is j of q eta minus ke plus 1 half eta transpose m dot eta plus eta transpose times m eta dot. Okay, so we've got this problem term here. That's a problem term. That's a problem term, right? So what, what strategy, now that we've, we've gone through this several times, what strategy do we have to maybe take care of that <coughs> m dot i i? We have that property, right? That's called the skew symmetric property. Okay, so the skew symmetric property says, again, um, I'll write it over here. And this is the skew symmetric property is um, epsilon transpose times one half m dot minus vm times epsilon equals zero. Okay? So, well, we've got our one half eta transpose m dot eta. We got the first part of it. Okay, then we're going to have eta transpose times, well, here's the minus vm part, but here's q dot. And we need eta here, right? All right, so that's okay because we know that we did a variable transformation from q dot to eta. All right, so I'm just going to replace q dot q dot equals um, eta plus q d dot. All right, so this is going to equal minus Vm times eta minus Vm times Qd dot minus F minus G minus M Qd double dot plus torque where All this stuff there, I'm going to group into a term, and I'm going to call it W, or I could call it Y theta. <clears throat> Why did I do that? That's just a bunch of niblets, right? That's just a bunch of leftovers. It's not going to do us any good. None of those terms do us any good. Um, and it's just the leftover dynamics that is not, it, you know, we might as well just get rid of it because it's, it's going to be bad in our Lyapunov analysis. 
And so if we have exact model knowledge, then we can just call it some function w and feed forward w and cancel it out directly, right? Because if we have exact model knowledge, then we, we assume, well, everything is measurable in here because we know our desired trajectory, the QD double dots and the QD dots. There's a Q dot term in here and a Q term in here. So we assume that we could measure Q and Q dot. QD double dot is always, or QD, QD dot, QD double dot, QD triple dot, and so on is always known. That's just some function given to us ahead of time. So if we had exact mod knowledge, we could just cancel this, this out with a, feed, with a feed forward term. If we didn't have exact model knowledge and there was some uncertainty in the system, then we could have, and the uncertainty in this case is going to be linear parameterizable, so we can write it as y theta, and then we can design an adaptive controller like we've done several times in class to cancel it. And maybe you should do that as practice if you want to. But for, since I'm trying to emphasize the backstepping technique here, I'm, not, I'm just going to assume we have exact model knowledge and just cancel it out directly. So I've got minus Vm eta plus W plus torque. All right, so let's look forward to our Lyapunov analysis and let's design the torque. Okay, I'm going to design the torque right here so we can be on the same board. So the first bad term I've got is sitting right here, right? E transpose times J times eta. Okay, so E transpose times J times eta is a scalar. It has to be, right? Because V is a scalar. If it's not a scalar, then I've done something wrong. And what can we do to a scalar? We can just take the transpose, because the transpose of a scalar is the same. <laughs> so if I wanted to, I could rewrite this term as eta transpose times J transpose times E, right? Now I've got eta transpose sitting down here. I can measure J and I can measure E. So I might as well put that in my torque and cancel it out, right? Let's get rid of that one. All right, so we've got eta transpose, so we're going to have a minus J transpose E. So down here for our torque, let me write my, oof. I want to delete my Lyapunov function. That's pretty clear what it is. So for my torque, I'm going to write as minus J transpose E. And we're putting that term in there to cross with this one. Then I'm going to get E transpose minus KE. That's great. We love that term. Now what we would like to also have is like an eta squared term, minus K eta squared term. We got this term sitting here though. We got to get rid of that one. But we've got our minus VM eta term sitting right here, right? We left that to kind of float through. All right, so we're not going to do anything in our torque. We're just going to, this term came out naturally from the dynamics. Okay, so we're just going to leave this term in there. So this term, because of what's the name of the property, I.I.? Yeah. The skew symmetric property is going to allow us to cancel those two things out, right? Eight, one, eta transpose times one half m dot minus eta transpose times vm eta. All right, so we've got rid of those bad terms. The only other bad term left in our closed loop dynamics for eta is this omega term. So in our control input, we needed to have a minus w. And then that w would cancel with that w. And then also in our control input, let's have a minus k eta. So then this will give us a minus k eta sitting there. OK, so then v dot is equal to minus k um, e transpose e minus k eta transpose eta. What do I know I have at this point?
Can I stop right here and say what the stability of the system is? I mean, we've been doing this enough now that you should be able to stop at this point. I mean, on a test and stuff, you need to demonstrate that you can follow through all the rest of the steps. But in your mind, the, the game is over, right? What do we have? Global exponential, right? Because this is equal to um, minus k times the norm of z squared, where z is a vector of e transpose eta transpose transpose. And our Lyapunov function was equal to 1 half e transpose e plus 1 half um, eta transpose m eta. And I also had another property. All right, so, so this would be difficult because we've got this m thing here to show global exponential because that m thing kind of monkeys things around because it's, it's state dependent, it's time varying. So we exploit another property. And that other property, um, that other property is the positive definite property where we use the Raleigh Ritz theorem that says epsilon transpose m epsilon can be upper bounded by the minimum eigenvalue times the more norm of epsilon squared and upper bounded by the maximum eigenvalue times the norm epsilon squared. This was the Raleigh Ritz theorem. Okay, so we're assuming that M is positive, definite, and symmetric. Okay, this is the assumption that the inertia is positive, definite, and symmetric. It's a very mild assumption because it's always true almost. Um, and because it's positive, definite, and symmetric, because we've assumed these things are true, then we can apply the Raleigh Ritz theorem that says if it's positive, definite, symmetric, then epsilon transpose m epsilon is um, lower bounded by the minimum eigenvalue times the norm squared and upper bounded by the maximum eigenvalue times the norm squared. And so we could go over here to our Lyapunov function and we could say that this is upper bounded by um, one half times some constant times the norm of z squared, where this constant has to do with, uh, well, in fact, we don't have to write the one half. The one half can be inside the constant. So, so the constant has to do would be like uh, the, the maximum of one half and one half lambda two. Okay, so then we can replace z squared with v over c. And I can put V over C here, and I get V dot is equal to minus K over C V. So then I can get my exponential stability result. But uh, because this was a negative definite, <coughs> Lyapunov derivative. Um, and so this looked pretty straightforward from this point, and it is. But just be careful that you understood the nuances in here that we had to assume this is positive, definite, symmetric in order, well, we needed that initially even to say that V was positive, definite. Um, but this also allowed us to develop this bound that we could use to get our global exponential stability result. Global exponential stability. Okay? V dot doesn't equal negative K over C V. It's bounded by? Right? Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions on this example? Okay, so now I want to do a class exercise. I want to give you guys some practice thinking about backstepping stuff. So um, now I want to work this academic example.
And I want you to try and do it at your desk to start with. Now, you know you're going to use backstepping because that's what we've been concentrating on and that's what this is supposed to teach. But on a test, why would you know that you should use backstepping here? Or more importantly, as a control engineer in the field and you're given this model of a plant, why would you know to use backstepping? Because the control input is only down here. So what's measurable is um, x1, x2, x3, and a, which is a constant. And your objective is to show If the show x1 goes to 0 and prove all states are bounded. Okay, so why don't you work on this example. Yeah, question I? It's a positive constant. Positive known constant. It's not measurable, it's known. Okay, so work on this example.
Okay, looks like about half the pencils have stopped writing, so, so, so let's go over it together. So you've got three differential equations. Which one would you start with? All right. Darren suggests we start with x1. Is that what most of you guys did, or did you start with something else? Prague, did you start with x1? I define two by stepping errors. So where does that start with x1? Um, OK, well, we'll get to that in a second then. Will? Right, yeah. 